17 years. Damn, I feel old. What's up, everybody? This is Rob from the Basement Bike Shop. And today I'm going to show you how to install a mid bottom bracket using a bench vise. Now, when a bearing press is not available to me, the bench vise is my favorite method of installing a bottom bracket. The bottom bracket we're installing today is the kink mid bottom bracket for a 24 millimeter spindle. But this technique can be used for any mid bottom bracket of any size spindle. The tools we're going to need today are a bench vise, some pieces of plywood, something to measure with, and then a hacksaw and some files in case our center spacer is too long. Inside the bottom bracket box, we'll find the two bearings, and then the non-drive side cone spacer. Now this is the taller of the two cone spacers. The drive side cone spacer, the center tube spacer, and some various micro spacers. And a sticker. But for this video, we just need the two bearings and the center tube spacer. The cone spacers and the micro spacers we'll use when we set the crank in the next video. So the first thing we have to do is size our center tube spacer. Now, if the measurement we're about to take on the frame is 51 millimeters, then you don't have to cut this. And if it's 49 millimeters, then there's already a mark on it. So now we want to measure the distance between the right bearing race and the left bearing race. Now what the bearing race is, is it's the little ridge inside the bottom bracket of the frame that the bearing sits against when it is all the way in. The distance between the two bearing races is the measurement that we want to cut our center spacer to. Once we have our measurement, we want to transfer it to our center tube spacer. And then we want to mark it all the way around. Now it's better to cut the center tube spacer too long than too short. You can always file it down a little bit to make it perfect. If you cut it too short, then it's going to push your bearings together too far and it's going to cause your crank to lock out and it's not going to spin right. Apparently I don't know how to work a video camera. I thought that I hit record to start recording, but apparently it stopped recording. So you don't get to see me cut through it. But I'll explain what I did. After I marked it all the way around, I cut about a quarter of the way through and then I rotated it a quarter and then I cut about a quarter of the way through and I kept doing that until it went all the way through and snapped off. Even though it looks jagged, I can always file that flat again as long as my measurements are correct all the way around it. If you cut from one side to the other straight through, nine times out of ten, you're going to cut it at an angle and then it's going to be very hard to work with. This way, at least I know that it's square. Again, you're going to want to cut it a little bit long so you can file it down perfect. And then once you get it all filed down and the burrs cleaned off of the inside and outside, especially the inside, um, you want to check to make sure that it slides onto the spindle smoothly. Um, it should slide on with ease. If not, um, do a little bit more filing on the inside. But as long as it slides on, then we're good to go. And now it's time to prep the vise. I take half inch strips of plywood and I rubber band them to each of the jaws. This will allow me to press against the frame or the bearing without damaging either. We're going to press in one bearing at a time. Um, you never want to try and do both bearings at once. What happens is if one starts to go in crooked, it puts pressure on the opposite side of the other bearing and then that one goes in crooked too. And then you have two crooked bearings stuck in a frame. It's a lot easier when you have one side that stays flat, uh, gives you more control over that bearing that you're putting in. Now you want to line it up with the center of the jaw on each side and then slowly turn it in while keeping an eye on it to make sure it doesn't go crooked. A little bit of grease on the outside of the bearing will help it slide in a lot easier. 
I'm going to shoot this part all in one continuous shot so you can see how fast this actually goes. Now you want to push it in until it's flush, maybe a little bit more as it pushes into the plywood, and then we'll put the other bearing in. Remember to keep that rear triangle clear of the jaws of the vise. You wouldn't want to crunch that in there. Don't forget to put your center spacer in and then your other bearing. Again, a little bit of grease on the outside of that bearing will help it slide in smoother. Keep the rear triangle clear. Line it up again. I actually put a whole crank in once and then realized I forgot the center spacer and take the whole thing back apart. Now, as you can see, this bearing starts to go in crooked. So I back it off, put the high side of the bearing on the jaw, give it just a little push to straighten it back out, back it off again, line it up with the center again, and then push it all the way in. As you can see, that went pretty fast and I did it mostly with one hand. So it was also pretty easy. You can do this with an almost complete bike too. Um, you just might need a friend to help you hold the frame up as you do it. And then lastly, we're gonna countersink the bearings in all the way. And how I'm gonna do that is take the plywood off the one side and put a two by four in there and then repress against it. The two by four is softer. So it's gonna allow the frame to push and indent the two by four while the center of it pushes the bearing in all the way to the race and then flip it over and do the other side. Okay, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching. Check out my next video where I install a BSD Substance XL two-piece crank into this Mafia frame. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and I'll keep the videos coming. If you have any questions or suggestions, uh, comment below or email me. Thanks.